Okay, so good afternoon, Professor. Hello, everyone. So for today, I'm going to present the latest paper about uh, 3D face reconstruction. So I'm going to present the high face, which is uh, a short term for high fidelity 3D face reconstruction uh, by learning static and dynamic detail. The paper is uh, published in CVPR in 2023 on March uh, 20. Uh, so the main uh, idea or the key overview of this paper is that they try to say the 3D MA model has a great potential in reconstructing any kind of 3D faces, but it has some kind of uh, limitation. So in order to overcome that limitation, they introduce the two key points which contributed to this paper, which is uh, separately trained the static and dynamic details. So they propose the utilization of uh, displace displacement basis and the polarized expression to be able to capture the nuance and the details when we construct 3D faces. So as you, as you can see here, given an image of 2D image, we try to reconstruct using the 3D MA model, which is the second row. As you can see here, using the 3D MA model, we cannot really capture the wrinkle and the different kind of subtlety that we can see from a natural image. Mm -hmm. So they try to capture the, the dynamic detail. The red boxes indicate the detail they capture when they train using the static and dynamic details. So this is the major key points for this paper, using the static details and dynamic details to reconstruct the face. So I, I will present the related work. So, uh, so far, uh, there is different kind of techniques to re render or to reconstruct faces using 2D uh, image. So the first one is, as I already said, using the 3D model. Uh, it's a struggle to accurately represent the extreme or the, the nuanced face expressions because, because of the high representation, because they use a lower dimension to reconstruct the 3D MA models. So it lacks individual key features. So uh, also uh, a lot of people have been working with uh, coarse shape uh, reconstruction. The main problem with this one is uh, they don't really have any kind of, uh, 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 like any kind of varied, any kind of variety of the data set, you know? So this only works uh, within control setting, which is if we have the front and no occlusion uh, image. So also people, for the last presentation, I also presented using the synthetic data. And some of the challenge with synthetic data is it lacks diversity. Nowadays it's getting better, but sometimes it lacks diversity, making it very hard to generalize well, you know. So, but for this paper, they try to use the combination of static data and real data to reconstruct the faces. So that's the key point to notice. So this is the overall structure. Uh, so as I said, like uh, they have two explicit model to capture the details. So the static model, which is person specific properties. For example, every, every face has some facial structure, which is basic, uh, the eyes, the, the, the forehead and the nose and the cheek. So this is the static, uh, the static details they they try to capture, and also the dynamic capture, which is uh, expression-driven wrinkles and a lot of details, surprise, smile, that kind of expressions uh, lead to dynamic details. You know, so this is the the over uh, view of their architecture. So first they use the input image, which is the combination of synthetic and real data. So they try to use uh, pre-trained ResNet-15 to extract key features, and they extract like uh, uh, around six coefficient parameters they can train. So they have like pose coefficient, identity, expression, static, albedo, and like other dynamic coefficient as well. So they also use a 3D MA model, which takes in the pose, the expression and the identity function, and with the combination of their dynamic and static uh, dynamic and static uh, inputs they try to render using the 3d model and the the static and dynamic uh, details they get and they try to uh, render the final output image so I'm, i will go the, into detail of each architecture to explain more 
So, so the left one is the, the general overview of the architecture. So the right one is their contribution of the static and the dynamic details. So, uh, uh, so right one yeah. is uh, detailing the yeah. sum of the modules. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the this is the paper, this is the model that we I already presented before. So the contribution starts from here. So they try to explicitly present how they did it. Well, this is the expand version of uh, this static dynamic detail expressions. Okay. Uh, so this is the general overview. So as I said before, they use a resonate feature extraction, feature extraction to extract the coefficient so that they can train on. Uh, so they use like for the 3D MA model, it's uh, they call it like the coarse shape, and they also add the fine detail. So the fine details comes from the static and dynamic detail uh, architectures. So they finally, they try to use the renderer, uh, which is like a PyTorch renderer to merge the 3D model they have and uh, to add the detail shape they get from using static and dynamic details. So now let's focus on to their key contribution. So for this pipeline, they try to uh, extract features, the coefficient features from Resonate, uh, pre-trained Resonate model. So they get uh, beta, uh, xi, and like phi parameters, and they try to use it to build their own static and uh, dynamic details. So first, they try to explicitly decouple the static and dynamic factor. As I told you, the static is uh, facial, uh, facial expressions. The dynamic is expression-driven uh, details. So finally, uh, for example, they here they have beta, so this is a coefficient and they try to bi is the displacement basis which they try to build uh, using the scanned environment here. Yeah. So I will explain this later. So this is just the general overview. So using this expression, they try to interpolate between the dynamic details and they give the output, you know. So let's look each, uh, each of the terms closely. So, so the so the overall dynamic details d is the detail factor which includes the static and dynamic details. So this is the combination of the static and dynamic details. So let's look the the static detail they try to use. So for the static detail, so to get the static detail, they try to start with the mean uh, static detail and they try to add some kind of weighted combination with the displacement. Uh, basis so that they could construct the static details. So B, so for the B static, they try to construct uh, displacement basis. So this is uh, this is from the from the built-in 300 300 uh, dimension. Uh, so this is a 300 dimension basis. They try to build from the scanned image. So they try to capture, this is the just the neutral expression, which is captured by scanning or like around like 332 ba uh, faces. And they try to use PCA to reduce it to uh, 300 dimensions. So they said, if we can somehow con like control the coefficient and if we can somehow multiply it with the uh, the displacement basis, we can really capture the uh, facial expression that we try to render. So this is the main the main idea between the static generations. So D, D bar is the mean displacement map and displacement basis is just the, 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 the build in uh, from the 362 scans. So for the dynamic details, it's very difficult to capture the dynamic details, but they try to argue that to in order to capture any kind of emotions, we can do we can use the linear combination between the compressed and between the uh, stretched version. You know, so given the stretched and given the compressed version, we can really 
combine the two extremes to capture any kind of emotions. So the interpolation between the compressed and the stretch displacement map cannot, can, can capture a lot of emotion. That's the, the basic idea behind this uh, expressions. So for the compressed, uh, for the compressed basis, they try to build another uh, uh, 26 dimensional displacement basis from scanning different kind of faces. And they try to uh, build the displacement map for compressed, the displacement map for stretched, you know. So they also need a dynamic coefficient. So from, uh, from the previous architecture, uh, the resonant uh, feature does not give any kind of dynamic coefficients. So they try to somehow create their own dynamic coefficient to control how the expression can vary. So this is how they create the dynamic coefficient. So to create the dynamic coefficient, they try to use uh, a transformation, which is uh, used uh, MLP, which is a multi-layer perceptron. And they also use uh, like adaptive instance normalizations. Uh, so to create the, the dynamic coefficient of compressed and the dynamic coefficient of uh, like stretched, they try to apply uh, the mean, like they, they try to calculate. So, so this is this is the the z score, which is which they use uh, uh, which they use like uh, normalization to be able to make the scale between the expressions and the static option the same. So they're just calculating the distribution to make the distribution the same. So they try to capture they try to capture the difference between the static and the uh, the dynamic expression together. So they apply, this is the transformation uh, vector, which takes in the mean between uh, the static option and the expression option to be able to output uh, the, the option for compressed and the stretch. You know? So you might ask that we have a static coefficient to be able to use the dynamic environment. So the reason they try to use static coefficient is that uh, they say whenever someone is having some kind of expressions, it will be affected by his static face. So we know we we have to somehow combine the static fix we have and the dynamic expression that they will have. So given given the same expression, two people have different kind of display because of their dynamic facial expressions. So that's that that's how that's why they include the static expression when they calculate the dynamic details. So they also they also state in order to have a continuous map between the compressed and between the uh, like stretched face, we need to have some kind of a way to map between the two extremes, you know. So this is the D, D stretched and this is the D compressed. So between this two space, there is no way to map continuously. So in order to have this continuous map between the, the stressed and the compressed, they need to introduce some kind of uh, mapping techniques or interpolation techniques. So that's why they use this uh, vert extension. So the vert extension, uh, it, for example, let's say in the, in the course, like this is, is the, this is, for example, it's a shape. For example, this have some kind of shape. So for, for the tension vertex VI, so they try to say if we apply some kind of deformation to this vertex and H, we can calculate the deformation distance. You know? So they try to say, so they try to say EK is the So EK is the age between the age of each vertexes. So when we try to deform uh, the shape, it will change its kind of vertex. You know? So in order to map how and like in which direction does each vertex is changing, they try to calculate the distance of the each age with respect to the original position. So they try to say if, like for example, EK is the deformed age position, age distance. 
and e k prime is the age for each vertex uh, with respect to neutral position. So as uh, so you can see here, if if we have a compressed uh, expressions, the the this this the 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 numerator will be like smaller, which makes the whole expression smaller, and it will be positive. But if we have a stretch expression, the distance between the edges will be wider. So uh, the this whole expression will be uh, greater than one, which makes the whole TV uh, vertex tension like negative value. So they try to say using this mapping techniques, we can really uh, capture the different kind of facial expressions. So they try to add, if it's positive, we can multiply it with the D uh, compression. If it's negative, we can like somehow calculate the how we should move the stretched uh, displacement mean in order to capture the different kinds of emotions. So using this kind of deformation techniques, we can really map how we can control specific uh, expression features. So that's why they try to introduce the vertex tension, which is one of the most important concepts on this, on this paper. So for the static dynamic details, now we can talk about the loss function. So for this paper, like they use uh, lots of uh, loss function that can used to train the model. So the, one of the loss function they use is the static and dynamic loss function. So they try to uh, use the ground truths, which is annotated by synthetic data. So that's why they use synthetic data. In setting in, in the synthetic data, we can really have a ground truths like annotation uh, that can that can that can be very useful for training the the loss function. So d star are like d hat are the the reconstructed displacement map that we talk about, and dst is the the ground truth displacement map. So they just try to calculate the L2 loss function uh, to be able to train the model. So the overall detail function is the the loss function between static compressed and stretched uh, loss functions. So M detailed is just the facial mask uh, in the UV coordinate, which is which is try to focus on the face part only. Ground. Yeah, ground truth, like uh, ground truth, yeah. So also like they have like a coarse, the coarse shape uh, loss function. And they also have, uh, they also have reconstructed in grounds, gr like ground through space. So they try to also calculate the L2 norm between the two difference. And one of the things they introduce is the KL divergence loss. So KL divergence loss is, is the measure of the probability distribution between the two functions. So they introduce this because of like, it will help to prevent overfitting. They try to show this by experiment. So they also use, uh, they also have this uh, KL uh, loss function, uh, which applies softmax function to be able to make the ground truths and the predicted coefficient uh, probability similar. So they also use like self-supervised loss, which I present on the last time. It 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 is it, it calculates the uh, photo loss, the per perceptual loss, and also it can introduce the dense landmark loss, which I presented before. So they also add one more loss function, which they call it like a knowledge distillation function. This is just doing some kind of uh, enforcement to make similar between the predicted age probability and between the pre-trained age recognition model. So they say. Uh, there is a high correlation between the static and the age-based prediction model. If we can really learn the high level representation, it can help the static detail to capture the high and the low detail as well. So this is just uh, minimizing the uh, probability distribution of the, uh, the age and the static detail they have. So they also use a regularization to avoid overfitting. And they also use like L uh, lambda. It's the pre like predetermined weight before the experimentation. Yeah. So this is the overall loss function. So the overall loss function include the detail loss function, which I described before, the shape, and also the knowledge distillation, and also the self-supervised loss function. Uh, finally, they add a regularization to 
to avoid overfitting. So what is the actual difference? Like, so the paint shade yeah. is for vision. Yes. Yeah. see uh, from figures in the church. Yes, the yes. Detail loss. Yes, yeah. So they only add the detail loss and they use the previous state of art work loss function on top of their own, like, uh, because they say if we don't really add those like uh, like those uh, loss function, it cannot really generalize well. So uh, that's why they add a lot of loss function here. So the implementation detail is just they use a combination of like 200k synthetic image, which they synthesize, and they also have like uh, 400k real image uh, from the diverse democratic groups, and they also use landmark detector, uh, key feature extractor and also a lot of pre-trained model to be able to extract features and uh, uh, calculate the loss function. So they also use a lot of data, which from uh, Celeb A and high face quality image. And they try to train this model using eight NVIDIA Tesla GPUs. And they used ResNet 15 pre-trained on the ImageNet for initialization the training, uh, the training data. So this is just the implementation detail. So they try to experiment like with without the real image, without the detail loss like uh, loss, and without the knowledge distillation loss function. So here is the it's just some of the result that we can see here. So without the real image, it doesn't really generalize well. So that's why they have they have to add the real image as well. So without the detail loss function, as you can see here. It, it doesn't seem real and it has a lot of wrinkles. So without the knowledge distillation, it just it doesn't really, uh, it just fits to the data. So using their final combined loss function, they get a, a good, uh, uh, like a good faceful and like sharp uh, image as compared to the other. So this is the benchmark they provide. So surprisingly, when it comes to mouse region, I think like the deep 3D face outperformed them. But in overall general uh, benchmark, I think they have a pretty high accuracy compared to the previous state of art. This is just some uh, benchmark they presented. But, uh, how, yeah. they, how they open that detail? I mean, mm -hmm. that obviously is uh, for each region, right? Yeah. So RN, uh, so which region, uh, which, each column denotes which region? Yeah, yeah. So, so RN is just for the neck region, for the mouse region, for the forehead region, and for the like cheek region. So they try to calculate the difference between each region, and they try to uh, rank different model with respect to their own model. So. Yeah. Uh, do they compare their ground truth vertices or uh -huh. truth to the primitive vertices? Yes, yes, Is yeah. The vertices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the mean square error. So this is like this is the comparison they did between the dense, which is the latest paper so far before this paper came out. So as you can see here, it's just a linear interpolation. It's, it doesn't really capture the wrinkle and other kind of effect, you know. So the dense is just like constant, uh, constant like constant sharp image, but the detail have like a little a little bit wrinkles and nuance uh, feature that can capture using their own model. So this is just their their uh, their but, model uh, presentation. Their ground truth. This one. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. do they, uh, is their ground to have their details? Uh, yes, yes. So they try to use, uh, they try to use like like for the for the that detail they only use synthetic data because they can control like uh, specific features and that kind of, that's why they use synthetic data because the ground truths have detail expressions, you know. So the ground truths, yeah. details are already discussed. Yes, yeah, using the synthetic data, but the the reason they use real data is like when we try to. Uh, apply to the real human being, it doesn't generalize well. So they try to also use the real data when they train. Mm -hmm. But for the loss function, they use the synthetic annotations. Yeah. So which state are they to do? Uh, like they don't really pro they don't really uh, explicitly state. They just like state the previous like uh, fake it until you make it the paper I presented, which is by Microsoft. I'm guessing uh, since it's similar 
research institution, yeah, I think they take it from that kind of data set. Is that synthetic data having such expression that we include uh, such details? Yeah, they, they have such details. On, the, on that paper, they say like, we will work more to include more expressions. I'm guessing maybe they try to add their own additional wrinkle effect, but that paper is not enough for this amount of reconstruction. But I guess they are using a little bit more advanced wrinkle effect. So because uh, nobody for hand or body, yeah. Uh, that kind of synthetic data, nobody don't have such realistic, uh, realistic detection. Yeah, yeah. So we cannot normally uh, train Models to capture such details using synthetic data, yeah. but rather we have to uh, capture it by training it using some e two D inputs. <laughs> but here, yeah, it takes easier than yeah. other domains because yeah. synthetic data already have. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 that was that was the major point for this paper as well. Like when they try to say. Like we leverage the use of synthetic data. That's why they have a higher accuracy. Without the synthetic data, it, it will not be this faithful when they reconstruct it. Yeah, so the limitation of this paper is there is a little bit of struggle like during the reconstruction of like emotional and structural regions, such as like the mouse and cheeks. So for the future work, they try to say like we gonna come up with a model that can explicitly capture the feature of the difference between the the key point of like mouse and cheek points, you know. So this is the limitation of the paper as well. But I think, yeah, maybe we can assume that there is no synthetic data mm -hmm. that can capture such difference. Okay. Then in that case, we have to train our model from maybe 2D images mm -hmm. rather than synthetic graph yeah. if there's no graph. Right? Yeah. So that's also, I think, interesting. So, yeah, I, we can render differentially render the 3D dimension 2D image mm -hmm. and we can compare that image to the original. Yeah. And maybe if we just render our uh, Major reconduction visual, mm -hmm. then you may use some uh, details. Yeah, yeah. But uh, by comparing it with a uh, mirroring of image, you can yeah. uh, back propagate that ground to the uh, 3D geometry. Yeah. So by doing that, you can control the So maybe I think next should be like that because, yeah, normally we think. In synthetic data, uh, the such details are not uh, fully captured. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, maybe we have to learn that from realistic images. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's it for me. If if you have any more question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Or uh, can you can you once more uh, show the pipeline or work pipeline? Okay. Okay. Oh, did I cancel it? Where is it? Shoot that. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So where uh, is the, uh, the operations you mentioned? Okay. I have considered it. So this equation is, is trying to capture the vertex tension I talked about before. So this is the vertex tension and then the position between the two extremes. Yeah. So the, the stretch and the compressor is this one. So to mark the distance between the two expressions, they use this vertex extension to try to interpolate or continuously mark between the two points. Mm -hmm. So they also have the, the, the static data, which is uh, very useful to have the final output. So they're using the final output, they try to render using the 3D model. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
So, and the rest of things are similar to any events. Yes. The other reason is I used to think that like the because 3D model becomes to the front shape becomes a yeah. and I better we have a front. Yeah. And the illumination model is also it is yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. But that has the CK modules yeah. Uh, yeah. So the only the only uh, the only contribution is this detail like capture as well. So they try to elaborate on how we did that. Thank you. So, this uh, if you prepare uh, your look, yes, yeah, but uh, you can you can present that yeah. as well. And also, uh, who is preparing for the look two as we? Preparing the look one to three. One to three. You prepared everything. Yeah. 